Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are on review for, I will record review for and pin it to the top of my Facebook page, which is ACIM Read With Me. Um, so you can reference back as we do the review lessons every day. Review for introduction. Now we will review again, this time aware we are preparing for the second part of learning how the truth can be applied, 246. The second part of learning how the truth can be applied refers to part two of the workbook, which begins with lesson 221. This means then that we are supposed to practice this review aware that we are preparing for part two and concentrating on readiness for it. Next sentence. Today we will begin to concentrate on readiness for what will follow next. Such is our aim for this review and for the lessons following. Thus we review the recent lessons and their central thoughts in such a way as will facilitate the readiness that we would now achieve. There is a central theme that unifies each step in the review we undertake. Which can, simply, which can be simply stated in these words. My mind holds only what I think with God. This is a fact and represents the truth of what you are and what your Father is. It is this thought by which the Father gave creation to the Son, establishing the Son as co-creator with Himself. It is this thought which fully guarantees salvation to the Son, for in his mind no thoughts can dwell but those his Father shares. Lack of forgiveness blocks this thought from his awareness, yet it is forever true. Let us begin our preparation with some understanding of the many forms in which the lack of true forgiveness may be carefully concealed. Because they are illusions, they are not perceived to be but what they are, defenses which protect your unforgiving thoughts from being seen and recognized. Their purpose is to show you something else and hold correction off through self-deception made to take its place. And yet your mind holds only what you think with God. Your self-deceptions cannot take the place of truth. No more than can a child who throws a stick into the ocean change the coming and the going of the tides, the warming of the water by the sun, the silver of the moon on it by night. I've always loved that. 247. This poetic image means that just as a child throwing a stick into the ocean cannot change the ocean's eternal rhythms, the coming and the going of the tides, the warming of the water by the sun, the silver of the moon on it by night. So the tiny self-deceptive thoughts we throw into our minds cannot change our eternal oceanic minds, which ultimately respond only to the light, warmth, and gravitational pull of God. So do we start each practice period in this review with readying our minds to understand the lessons that we read and see the meaning which they offer us. Begin each day with time devoted to the preparation of your mind to learn what each idea you will review that day can offer you in freedom and in peace. Open your mind and clear it of all thoughts that would deceive. And let this thought alone engage it fully and remove the rest. My mind holds only what I think with God. So we'll do, I'll do a meditation every day for each lesson. Five minutes with this thought will be enough to set the day along the lines which God appointed. And to place his mind in charge of all the thoughts you will receive that day. Actually, I'll make one meditation because if they're going to all be the same, and then we can use that each day, twice a day. They will not come from you alone, for they will be shared with him, and so each one will bring the message of his love to you, returning messages of yours to him. So
so will communion with the Lord of hosts be yours. So I will now read 248. Lord of hosts is a term for God used frequently in the Old Testament, meaning Lord of armies. This can mean earthly armies, but the ac the accent is probably on on, <laughs> on angelic armies. I have to laugh at myself sometimes, quite often. The idea is that God has at his command great armies, both visible and invisible, that he can send in service of his cause. In a coarse context, we can perhaps see it as an implying that God has at his disposal a multitude of angels through which he guards our journey and leads us back to him. So, so will communion with the Lord of hosts be yours, as he himself has willed it be, and as his own, as his own completion joins with him, so will he join with you who are complete as you unite with him and he with you. After your preparation, merely read each of the two ideas assigned to you to be reviewed that day. Then close your eyes and say them slowly to yourself. There is no hurry now, for you are using time for its intended purpose. Let each word shine with the meaning God has given it as it was given to you through his voice. Let each idea that you review that day give you the gift which he has laid in it for you to have of him. And we will use no format for our practicing but this. Each hour of the day bring to your mind the thought with which the day began and spend a quiet moment with it. Then. Repeat the two ideas you practice for the day unhurriedly with time enough to see the gifts which they contain for you. And let them be received where they were meant to be. We add no other thoughts, but let them be the messages they are. We need no more than that to give us happiness and rest, an endless quiet perfect certainty and all of our Father wills that we receive as the inheritance we have of Him. Each day of practicing as we review, we close as we began, repeating first the thought that made the day a special time of blessing and of happiness for us, and through our faithfulness restored the world from darkness to light from grief to joy, from pain to peace, from sin to holiness. God offers thanks to you who practice, thus the keeping of his word. And as you give your mind to the ideas for today again before you sleep, his gratitude surrounds you in the peace wherein he willed you be forever and which you are learning now to claim again as your inheritance. And I'll go ahead and read Robert Perry and Alan Watson's breakdown of this review. So review, introduction, and lessons. This is review four, introduction and lessons, 141 through 150. If you will recall... Back in the workbook introduction, we were told the workbook is divided into two main sections, the first dealing with the undoing of the way you see now, and the second with the acquisition of true perception. Although part two does not begin for another 80 lessons, the introduction to review four announces that we are entering a transition stage of the workbook preparing for the second part of learning how the truth can be applied. Part two of the workbook, if you will look at it, consists of lessons that are a half page long or less. They give very few specific practice instructions and offer us a great deal more latitude in exactly how we practice. They are geared to students who have begun to make the truths of the course their own and who are ready to apply them independently. 
This view, review gives us some pre preliminary exercises in that kind of independent practice. In Lesson 153, shortly after we complete this review, there will be a major shift in practice, as we shall see, which will set the pattern of the practice during the rest of Part 1 of the workbook. Therefore, following the practice instructions for this review is quite important if we want to be pre prepared for what is yet to come. <clears throat> You'll notice that the reviews gave us nothing, give us nothing but the theme thought for the review and the two theme ideas being reviewed. There is no additional commentary. In a sense, we are meant to supply that commentary for ourselves. We are meant to take the ideas and let the Holy Spirit open their meaning in our own minds, without the prop of printed words to help us. Let each word shine with meaning, meaning God has given it, as it was given to you through His voice. And if I could just pause right there, this is why I don't think a lot of commentary is necessary at all through this process. Sometimes I may be inspired to share something, but truly this is it. It's all right here. It's so encompassing, um, all encompassing. And um, sometimes hearing somebody's perspective on it can even taint what God, what the intended purpose is. So that's why I'm careful about that. And I don't like to listen to people's basically commentary yes if you share your experience that diff that's wonderful but I don't want to share my opinion my experience yes my opinion no um, so I hope I hope that that's what I'm doing when I do feel inspired to share and like I said I have to feel inspired you know um, to share because I I can't make myself share and I'm, I'm grateful that, um, I'm grateful for that because I put God in charge and he's in charge of all of this and I don't want to taint it at all. All right, so um, perhaps you do not feel ready for this. I confess that when I first did the workbook, I pretty much lost interest after part one. I did the lessons, but really all I did was read them, think about them for a minute or two and forget them. The reviews, such as this one, seem particularly pointless to me. Two or three sentences wasn't enough to stimulate my mind, and I was not ready, apparently, to allow the Holy Spirit to let each word shine in my mind. You may find yourself in the same boat. Still, I would say, try to follow the instructions. Take the few lines given for each day and ruminate on them. Chew them over. Think about what you know of their meaning and ask to be shown more. If it works for you, try to initiate a dialogue with the Holy Spirit about the ideas. Turn them into prayers. Think how they can apply to your life. Be still before God and let the feeling of the ideas wash over you. Do whatever seems to work for you. Maybe you won't feel that you're doing very well, but what is the purpose of practice if not to learn to do something you don't know how to do well? Notice the theme thought for the review. My mind holds only what I think with God. The instructions tell us to spend five minutes letting this one thought and this alone engage our minds and remove all other thoughts. What we are doing is clearing the stage making way for the Holy Spirit to teach us. The five minutes spent with this idea each day is our warm-up period. We are making ourselves ready to receive the thoughts of God through His Holy Spirit. We are preparing ourselves to hold communion with God. Only after this five-minute warm-up are we instructed to take the two thoughts for review and let their meaning illuminate our minds. So we have a five minute meditation first. There is no time limit given here. We are to review them slowly and with no hurry. 
So surely this will be more than a few seconds. So after the meditation, just sit with the, the review, the thoughts for review. More like several minutes at the least. The best way is to be able to do this review without concern about time. Oh, I wish we could all live that way <laughs> in this world, in this world. If we take five minutes or 25, it does not matter. The important thing is that we commune with God and let his thoughts fill our minds. As the review says of our hourly review sessions, we should take time enough to see the gifts that they, the two ideas, contain for you and let them be received where they were meant to be. The exact amount of time you spend is left to you. I'm sorry, my air conditioning's a little loud. Review for practice instructions. So the purpose of the review is to prepare for part two of the workbook, which is to, does not begin for another 80 lessons. The next review, review five, announces the same preparation. The workbook seems to assume that we have gotten over some kind of hump. See, for instance, workbook. Part one, I'm sorry, I was like, what is that? Part one, lesson 122. And that now, with much of our resistance behind us, we can focus on getting ready for the pinnacle, <coughs> for the pinnacle of the workbook, part two. So we're gonna have two longer practice periods at the beginning and the ending of the day for about seven minutes. Spend the first five, I'd say, meditating on the central idea of the review, my mind holds only what I think with God. Quiet your, remind, quiet your mind and repeat the idea over and over very slowly, focusing on its meaning. Let it clear out and replace all of your normal thinking. Your usual thoughts, as paragraph three and four explain, are really unforgiveness in disguise. Since these thoughts are not of God, they obscure the truth that your mind holds only what you think with God. By clearing them out and thinking only this one thought from the Course, you get in touch with your mind's true state in which it thinks only thoughts from God. This will prepare you for the day which reflects that true state in which the thoughts that occur to you come from God. If your normal thoughts try to intrude, dispel them with the central thought. One suggestion for this time is to use the imagery of 4-3. Picture your mind as the ocean. Placing one of your normal thoughts in your mind is like a child throwing a stick into the ocean. How can that change the grand rhythms of the ocean? The tides, the sun warming the water, the moon reflecting on the surface. How can that change the grand thoughts you share with God. After these five minutes, move on to the second phase. Read the two review ideas, close your eyes, and repeat them silently to yourself. God placed a gift inside each word. Let your mind receive that gift. Let each word shine with the meaning God has given it. Receive the thought he placed in there for you, for such receiving is the true condition of your mind. The purpose of the first phase is to prepare you for this second phase. By, sus by spending five minutes dwelling only on a thought from God, you prepare yourself to see in the two review ideas only the meaning placed in them by God. So in the evening, repeat the same practice. Realize that the central thought has made the day a special time of blessing both for you and the world through your faithful practicing. Realize also that you drop off into sleep surrounded by God's gratitude for your practicing, for you are now learning to reclaim the inheritance he gave you. And the shorter practice periods are hourly for a quiet moment. This is a miniature version of the morning and evening practice. 
spend a quiet moment with the central thought, then repeat the two review ideas, slowly giving yourself time to see the precious gifts of meaning that God has placed in them for you. Thank you for joining me about reading about review four. And please join me for the meditation. I love you.